here are two Atwood machine problems. I'm going to solve both of them. So it's a twofer, a double, a double whammy, a back to back. So the first problem is uh, your classic half Atwood machine where you have a mass on a table and then a mass hanging over a pulley that's connected to that. Uh, and th but there's friction on this surface. And then the second problem is no friction and it's the same mass, but now that it's not flat, it's inclined. So I'm going to start with this one and we're going to do that problem. I think I can, I think I can start right here in this space. So, but for both cases, I'm going to have the mass M1 is 1.9 kilograms, mass 2 is 1.2 kilograms. For this case, the coefficient of kinetic friction, we're going to assume it's already sliding, is, one, is 0.12. Okay, so the first thing to do is start off is draw the two free body diagrams for these two objects. So I'm going to have those. Here's mass 1. I have the downward gravitational force, M1G. I have the upward normal force from the table, N. And then I have the tension pulling this way. T, and then have a backwards pulling frictional force. Now, I've already made an assumption here. I've assumed that it's actually sliding that way, not accelerating that way, sliding that way. It actually could be sliding that way and slowing down. So I have any acceleration that way. So the frictional force, let's call this FF, always opposes the sliding, not the acceleration. Uh, and then, so for the other object, I have this. I have M2G and then T. Now there's three important things about tension. The tension in the string has, if, if it's a massless string, has a constant magnitude. So the tension here, the magnitude of the tension pulling on M1 has to be the, the same as M2. Number two, strings only pull in the direction of the string, so it's only pulling that way and that way. And number three, the length doesn't change. So that means that the acceleration of M1 has to be the acceleration of M2. If they weren't, then the string would stretch. So let's assume this, let's assume this accelerates that way. I'm just going to call that the acceleration A. Now the next thing I'm going to do is pick my, my coordinate system. I'm going to pick this as X and Y. So for mass 1, I can say this, F net Y equals 0. Because if the block stays on the plane, it doesn't accelerate up or down. So the net force in the y direction has to be zero. So I have, that's going to be equal to n minus mg. Now you notice here I have minus, and these are not vectors. These are the y components of these forces. Those are vectors. Okay, so the y component is positive n and negative mg. So from this I get n equals mg. This is m1g technically. And I need that to find the frictional force. So now I can say uh, F friction equals mu k times n. So that's going to be mu k, the coefficient of, static, of kinetic friction, times m1g. And be very careful, okay? You can see n is equal to m1g. That's not always true. You have to draw the diagram. Don't always, don't jump in and say n equals mg. So now I can write the... Uh, X force, F net X is going to be equal to T minus the frictional force, and that's going to be, I assumed it was accelerating that way, so this is going to be M1 A, A is in the positive X direction. Now I can plug in for uh, the friction force, and I get T minus mu K M1G equals M1 A. So that's an important equation right there. Okay, but I don't know T and I don't know A, so I need another equation. So we can look over here at this uh, object, and I can say F net Y equals uh, T minus M2G equals, now if this is accelerating that way, this has to be accelerating that way. So this is going to be equal to negative m 2 a. So now I have another equation. I have two equations, two unknowns. And I want to find the acceleration. So how do I find the acceleration? Well, the key here is I'm going to have to solve one of these for t and plug it into the other equation. So I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to add m2g to both sides. I get t equals uh, m2g minus m2a. Now, if you weren't thinking, you'd say, oh, I need to factor out the m2. Yes, that would be a good idea. But don't do that because actually we're going to need to solve for A. So now I'm going to plug this in there. 
and I get M2G minus M2A, that's at T, then I have, that's an A, minus mu K M1G equals M1A. Let's switch to another piece of paper. We don't need to save paper. So I'm going to rewrite that equation because I'm running out of room. Okay, so I have M2G minus M2A minus mu K M1G equals M1A. So I only have one term in here that I don't know the value to, and that's A. So I need to get all the A terms on one side. So I'm going to add M2A to both sides, and I get M2G minus mu K M1G equals M1A plus M2A. Now I can factor out the M, and that's going to be equal to the A. That's going to be M1 plus M2A. Now I can divide both sides by this, and I get A equals M2G minus mu K M1G, all of that over M1 plus M2. And that's my acceleration. So I guess we should put in some values. Everyone likes numbers. So let's put in the values. I get A equals M2 was 1.2. I'm going to leave off the units. Times G is 9.8 minus 0 0.12 times 1.9 times 9.8. All of that over 1.2 plus 1.9. And I'll use my handy dandy calculator, I, you know, like Python really, but I'm going to do it this way just because people like that. Okay, so I can't see. Okay, so I get 1.2 times 9.8 minus 0.12, no, no, 0.12 times 1.9 times 9.8 divided by... Mm, I got to put parentheses in there. See, this is why I don't like calculators. Okay, 1.2 times 9.8 minus 0.12 times 1.9 times 9.8. Close parentheses divided by parentheses 1.2 plus 1.9. Close parentheses, enter. And I get 3.07. Meters per second squared. Okay, let's just check this value up here though. Look, does this have the right units? G has units of meters per second squared, and then I have mass that has no units right there, so the mass cancels out and that all works. Okay, what if mu is equal to zero? What if it's frictionless? I should be able to convert back to the half Atwood machine by letting mu be zero. So if mu equals zero, that her term goes away, and I get M2G over M1 plus M2. That is the correct solution. And then from that, you can also check things like, well, what if, um, what if one of the masses is super heavy? What if, what if M1 is super heavy? It's possible that this could be greater than that, in which case it won't accelerate in the direction I said, right? It can't. So I, I have this assuming it's going to accelerate that way. But if this mass gets too large, or if the coefficient of friction is too large, then this term will be negative, and that means that it can only accelerate that way. So if that's the case, you could push it that way, and it would it would slow down and stop. Okay, you could push it this way, and it would still slow down and stop, but it would slow down and stop the other way. Okay, so if you wanted to say it's moving the other way, if it's moving this way, what would you change? Well, you just have to change the the sign right here. Yeah. I think. Okay. Well, I wanted to do the other problem. I'm going to start on a fresh piece of paper, though. Okay, so here we have this. Oh, my pen. This is 25 degrees. This is the 1.9. This is M1. And this is M2. Okay, so let's again start off by drawing our force diagrams. I'm going to start with this one. 
Um, so here's my mass. I have the downward gravitational force, m1g. I have an upward force from the from the plane, but it's perpendicular to the plane, so it's actually going to be that way. It's going to be like this. And then I have the tension. Now for this one, it's just going to be like it was before. I have m2g and then tension. Now again, I'm going to assume that it's accelerating this way, which I might, I might be wrong. So I'm going to pick A as this way. Now the next thing I need to do is pick my x and y axis. If you pick the x and y axis such that the acceleration is in one of the directions of the axes, it's going to make it much easier. So I'm going to pick this as x and this as y. And I don't even need to have the same x and y for this over here. It's okay as long as I stay with that coordinate for that object and this coordinate for that object. It'll work out. But if that's the case, if that's the angle theta, then this is also the angle, let's call that, let's put theta, theta. So now I can do, uh, if I do this, f net uh, y equals zero, right? Because if I had x this way, it would have both an x and a y acceleration, and that would make it really difficult. But in this case, it's not accelerating this way. It's staying on the plane. So now I can say what forces are in the y direction, my tilted y direction. Well, I have the normal force in, and then I have part of the gravitational force minus m1g cosine theta. So this is the adjacent side of that triangle. It's in the negative y direction, and that's the uh, opposite side in the negative x direction. So that's going to be equal to zero. Okay, now I don't know n. I could find it though. Okay, but I don't even actually need that really. So now I can go to the x direction, f net x is going to be equal to t, that's the tension in the x direction, and then a component of the gravitational force is in the negative x direction, it's this. So that's the opposite side of that triangle, so it's going to be minus m1g sine theta, and then the, I, I'm saying it's accelerating that way, so it's going to be equal to m1a. So there's my first equation. I don't know t and I don't know a. I can use this equation over here, and I can do the same thing, f net y equals t minus m2g equals negative m2a, right? Because this one's going to be accelerating down. So again, two equations, two unknowns. Here's my second equation. I don't know t, I don't know a. I don't know t, I don't know a. Let's solve this one for t. So I'm going to say t equals add m2 to both sides, m2g minus m2a and then plug that in over here. So instead of t, I'm going to write that. m2g minus, that's a g, m2a, now I need the rest, minus m1g sine theta equals m1a. And now what do I want to do here is to solve for a. So I have an a term, I have an a term. I'm going to add that to both sides. I get m2g minus m1g sine theta equals m1a plus m2a. And I can factor out the a, m1 plus m2a. And now I can divide both sides by this, and I get a equals m2g minus m1g sine theta over m1 plus m2. Uh, so let's go ahead and put this value in. Uh, I'm going to do this in Python though. So I, remember I have m1 equals 1.9, m2 equals 1.2, theta equals 25, and g equals 9.8. Okay, so let's just switch over to Python. It'd be fun because I don't want to do that in the calculator. I don't really like that calculator. Okay. Okay, so here we are. I have a blank Python. This is in our values. G equals 9.8. Let me make that a little bit bigger. That's good. Uh, M1 equals 1.9. M2 equals 1.2. Theta equals 25 times pi divided by 180. So, you know, there is a way to do trig functions in Python uh, using degrees, 
but I'd rather just convert it to, to radians. So multiplying by pi divided by 180 converts it to radians. If you, when you use your calculator, make sure you have your calculator in the right mode. So now I can just, I can, I can just type it in. I can say A equals, I'm just typing my equation. I'm looking at it right here. It's going to be M2 times G minus M1 times G times sine of theta, not that, theta, all of that divided by M1 plus M2. That's it. And then I just say print A equals A. You don't have to put all that stuff in there, meters per second squared. But I'll show you why I like to do this. Run it, and I get the acceleration. So it does indeed accelerate down. Like I said, I got because I didn't get a positive number. I mean, I got a positive number. If I got a negative number, it actually have to accelerate the other way. So let's just try. What if I change this angle to a steeper angle? I'm just going to pick a value. Let's just. What if I change that to 45 degrees? See now it's accelerating back down the plane. It doesn't have the the component of the uh, force. Let me move over to here. The component of the gravitational force pulling down this way is equal to the weight of that, and or greater than that, and it slides down. Now there is some angle. There's some angle where the acceleration is zero. I could go up here and solve for that, right? I could say uh, they, if if a is zero, then this has to be equal to that. So I could say m two g has to be m one g sine theta. So the g's cancel. So sine theta. It's going to be m2 over m1. If that's true, I should get a zero acceleration. Let's just test that. So switch back over here. So I'm going to say, I can leave that theta there. Oops. And I can say um, theta equals a sine, which is arc sine of m2 divided by m1. And now run it. Let's see what the acceleration is. Zero. See? So it did work. Um, well, there you go. Now, if you want to challenge yourself, how about do the inclined Atwood machine problem with friction? That would be fun. Okay, I'll stop there.